ဟောင်ကိုယ်ရချောက်ဆက်ချောက်ကုန်နေညမနိုင်ငံတရားစီရင်ထုံးစာမျက်နာနံဘာ 5000 his own valuation, erroneous framing of issue, ground for revision, held as suit for a judgment against a licensee is governed by Article 17, Clause C of Schedule 2 of the Court Fees Act. Neither the High Court nor the Chief Court had made any rules under Section 9. It therefore follows that Section 8 and 9 of the Act are inapplicable to the suit of the present nature. In such a suit, the plaintiff is at liberty to put his own valuation on his plane for the purpose of jurisdiction, although the court can refuse to accept such valuation if it finds that it is not bona fide or made with improper motive, such as a deliberate design to give the court a jurisdiction which it has not. Do we are met alliance Selin and Wen versus Mountain nineteen sixty BLR ninety seven AC Camrush Vases Dagi RLR nineteen forty one four hundred ninety five FB Rafa two Father it cannot be king said that the framing of issues is one of the most important aspects of a suit. It has a vital bearing on the trial and decision of the case in as much as the parties will thereafter be guided by the issues joined. If the court erroneously frame an issue which does not arise for the effectual disposal of the suit, it must be regarded as having committed a material irregularity in the exercise of jurisdiction which must be amendable to the revisions powers of this court. Bransuk Des Vases Shankar Des EIR 1929 Nagaland 347 Fankubai Vases Lakshman Fankuba 1888 Twa Bombay 617 Siva Braset Rem Vases Trikam Des Govaji Boja 1915-42 Galagata 926-27 IC 917 Panume and others Fases Niwanme and others AIR 1921 Cindy 159- F. B. Rafa 2. Ute, Syrian for the applicants. Ute, Mang for the respondents. Uta, P. Jesh in Civil Regular Suit No. 2 of 1964 of the Subdivisional Code of Syrian. Petitioner sued the respondents for adjustment from the premises known as 
house number thirty five along Sidu Street, Tongwa, on the ground that the letter who were their licensee had failed to vacate from the premises in spite of demands. The respondents resisted petitioner's suit on various grounds, amongst which it was contended that the trial court had no pecuniary jurisdiction to entertain the suit inasmuch as the subject matter of the suit was worth more than dead 30,000. The Lennon Subdivision Judge thereupon framed a preliminary issue, namely, what is the value of the house and site for the purpose of jurisdiction, and ordered an inquiry, although the petitioner submitted that such an inquiry was irrelevant, being aggrieved with the order, petitioner instituted the present revision. Now, it has been ruled in Doe Ahmed Alliance, Salim and One Vases, Mountain One, that a suit for adjudgment against a licensee is governed by Article 17, Clauses of Schedule 2 of the Code Fees Act, which provides as follows 17. Plain or Memorandum of Appeal in each of the following suit. C. Every other suit where it is not possible to estimate at a many value the subject matter in dispute and which is not otherwise provided for by this Act. 20. Yes. As regards valuation of suit, we must look to the suit valuation Act. Section 8 of the Act relates to certain suits in which code fees are payable at valorem. Section 9 deals with certain suit which do not admit of being satisfactorily valued and for which the High Court has with the previous sanction of the government made rules regarding valuation. Neither the High Court nor the Chief Court had made any rules under Section 9. It therefore follows that Section 8 and 9 of the Act are inapplicable to the suit of the present nature. In such a suit, the plaintiff is at liberty to put his own valuation on his plan for the purpose of jurisdiction, although the court can refuse to accept such valuation if it finds that it is not bona fide or made with improper motive, such as a deliberate design to give the court a jurisdiction which it has not. Thus in Kem Raj versus Tagi too, it has been held that a suit for restitution of conjugal rights is one in which the value of the subject matter in dispute cannot be estimated satisfactorily in terms of many. Consequently, it is a suit which may be brought upon payment of the fixed fee of 10 rupees mentioned in Article 17, says Schedule 2 of the Code Fees Act. In such a suit, the values as determinable for the computation of code fee and the value for the purpose of jurisdiction are not necessarily the same for the purpose of framing his plan the plaintiff must, so far as the case admits, insert therein a statement of the value of the subject matter of the suit for the purpose of jurisdiction, which valuation determines the foreign. In a suit for restitution of conjugal rights, 
the plaintiff may, for the purpose of jurisdiction, put any value he likes on the relief sought and thus determine the court in which the suit is to be instituted, provided that the valuation is made bona fide and not in order to affect an improper purpose. The principle enunciated therein will apply with equal force to the present case for a judgment of licensee, which also does not admit of being satisfactorily valued. Beside the copy of the seal deed filed by the petitioners, showed that the house was purchased by them from the respondents for a sum of just five thousand, and the valuation of the suit at this amount must therefore be deemed to be proper and reasonable. When the petitioners had. Properly value their suit in accordance. The trial court err in facing an issue regarding valuation and insisting upon an inquiry, which in fact is not necessary. It cannot be gainsaid that the framing of issues is one of the most important aspects of a suit. It has a vital. Bearing on the trial and decision of the case, inasmuch as the parties will thereafter be guided by the issues tried, if the court erroneously frames an issue which does not arise for the effectual disposal of the suit, it must be regarded as having committed a material irregularity. In the exercise of jurisdiction, which must be amenable to the revisionary powers of this court, e Bram Subdas Fasas Shankardas Three Jackson E J C has this to say: It has been contended on behalf of the plaintiff that under Section One Hundred Fifteen. Seba Procedure Code. There can be no revision of the order. It has, however, been held in Fangubai v. Lakshman Fangubai for that in any case where the court, having a mistaken and wrong apprehension of the questions at issue, proceed to determine an issue. Which does not really arise in the case and base its decision of the case on its determination of that issue. It as with material irregularity in the exercise of its jurisdiction. The same view has been taken in Siva Brasat Ram Fasas Tri Kamdas Kavaji. Buddha Phi, and I'm of opinion that revisions of the order is possible in Panume and others versus Niwan Mail and others said it has been decided that framing of an issue on a point which did not properly arise was a material. Irregularity in the exercise of jurisdiction, from which a revision to the High Court lay. In the result, the revision application succeeds, and the order of the Landed Subdivisional Judge, day, the eighteenth November nineteen sixty four, directing an inquiry. Over the issue regarding valuation of the suit is hereby set aside, and I derive that the suit shall proceed after framing proper and relevant issue. Petitioners are entitled to the cost of this application, advocate fees, jet thirty-four.